With EU REITs, Europe built the famous no data, no market wall around Europe. Behind that wall, a lot of valuable data is generated that Korean industry would also like to use for their K-REIT registration. Currently, negotiations are taking place between EU consortia and Korean CIFs. But there are more stakeholders you should be aware of, like NIER. And of course, Korean industry can also bypass the EU consortia and ask a CRO to execute new tests. So, it's all in the game. Today we'll discuss K-REITs with Eun Kyung Ryu, the K-REITs coordinator at BSF Korea and Alex Lee, product regulatory compliance manager at Camtura China. Welcome. Hi Kim. Nice to meet you. Taking the June 30, 2018 deadline into account uh, for the joint registration of the priority existing chemicals, uh, the clock is ticking, uh, Eun Kyung. Could you tell us a little bit about the preparatory status and in industry at the moment? Okay, out of 510 PEC substances, and as of end of May, um, 365 substances um, has found the KCIF, but still uh, 35 KCIF hasn't uh, nominated a lead registrant. So for the most of um, the majority of K uh, PEC substances, the registration um, dossier preparation work is ongoing, including negotiation discussion uh, with data owner, about the, um, the the price and the conditions, etc. And in case of CSR is required to be prepared, you should collect the information from registrant and their down, downstream users, like using exposure scenario, etc. So it is also ongoing. And you mentioned that several don't even have a lead registrant. Mm -hmm. uh, does that mean uh, out of the 510, several will not meet the deadline of 2018 June? I think a government is trying to to facilitate to nominate lead registrant in the case if. But it's also, Alex, I would say, in the interest of companies that their substances are registered in the end. Yeah, for the industries, you know, actually I, I'd like to end one, uh, one point that out of the uh, uh, 510, there are uh, lead registrants registered for one uh, string 15 substances. So I think that for the industries, it is a you know it is a challenge. I mean, the still you, as you know, the many substances have not have the lead registered, and the data negotiation it take time, and the preparations for the dossier for the CSR it take time. So it's just a one year left actually. Mm -hmm. So it is a very challenging. And and there are many stakeholders involved, uh, also like uh, the NIER. What is the role of NIER? NIER is in charge of our evaluation of registration dossier submitted uh, by industry, not only for new substances but also uh, PEC substances. So upon the uh, evaluation of dossier, they may request for further or additional information, even uh, order to produce a new data if they judge that um, the proper assessment or evaluation cannot be made mm -hmm. with the submitted dossier. So upon their review, they uh, designate toxic substance restricted or authorization chemicals that uh, requires further regulations for safe management. Mm -hmm. Okay. And is it uh, true that they also generate data themselves? Yes, it was part of their project um, historically for the f for the past few years. Usually, uh, focus on the acute toxicity and okay. some in vitro okay. genetic toxicity data. Are there differences uh, caused by the different organization of the sieves uh, that impact the data negotiations between EU and Korea? I think it's not because of the different organization. It's more about the. Um, the lack of mutual understanding about the situation at both sides and what is required um, to initiate data sharing um, from Europe to Korea. Do the European consortia understand the Korean position? They took time to understand what is going on for the carriage and understand, uh, finally they, are, they understand the requirement and they need, uh, there is a need to you know, uh, change the social agreement for the EU so they need to figure out that what is the data owner, and also they need to figure out so who is the owner, uh, what data should be shared with the uh, carriage. For, for you at BASF, of course, uh, a leading international company, is it easier because you have people on the side that own the data partly, they are part of the European consortia, and you're at the same time uh, BASF Korea also needing it. Does that 
help the negotiations? Yes, I think it's definitely helpful if BSF is there um, as a uh, as a one of members in EU consortium because BSF colleague would facilitate the communication to reach an agreement smoothly um, by explaining the situation in Korea. But the actual outcome may not be all the same because each EU consortium consortium um, would have their its own rules and agreement. And they need to change these rules Correct. and agreement yeah. nowadays, that's, that's for sure. Uh, they could adapt it especially for the Korean situation, but of course there are a lot of things happening also in the US, in Turkey. So would you be in favor of a kind of global consortium agreement? Yeah, I think that is the ideal situation, but it is very difficult. I mean, the different uh, consortium have their dif different situations. Some member of the consortium may not need the, you know, register that substance in, for, for example, in Korea or the Turkey. So I think the different consortium, they have the, you know, they need to decide. But that, yeah, definitely it is the ideal situation if we, you know, update, uh, upgrade the, the, the consortium agreement to a global one. I think it's a big advantage because if you have harmonized data set can be, which can be used globally, then harmonized hazard classification can be ensured. If the negotiations are not going the right way, the Koreans always can play the card that they go for a new testing. Are these costs comparable between EU and Korea for uh, testing? Yeah, we did compare that. You know, the, n not all of the substances, but for our experience, you know, Korea local CRO testing uh, price is around the 16 to 70 percent for the EU or the US. Actually, in Korea, there are not so many GLP laboratories, and those are not just waiting for clients who need data for KREITS registration purpose, because we have other local regulations that have similar registration schemes like crop protection chemicals. So, but basically, not many GLP labs. The cost might be a little bit cheaper, 60, 70 percent, but there is another impact, of course. What if the new test generate a different result. I think that would be a very important issue. What's your opinion on that? Yeah, I think that is a very, you know, big challenge. I mean, the, for the social members to decide whether to buy the existing data or to generate new data. So I think that for the EU registrant, also if uh, they are also need, have the need to register in Korea, that is a priority one. Okay, so basically for the uh, Korean uh, k reach registration work, there are many options. Eh? They can do the negotiations with the EU consortia. They have help from the government with data from NIER, for instance. They can use alternative data or they can go to a CRO to purchase and test new substances. Now then, uh, Eun Kyung and uh, Alex, thank you very much for your contribution. Uh, data negotiations can be a tough game, to, so therefore it's very good to point out for EU REACH consortia that like to linger over their homework, in Korea a popular version of Mahjong is played with three players only. So do not hide behind your wall and make sure you stay in the game. <laughs>